Hello students, in today's video you will learn how white attacks in the London system and how black can defend it. We're going to focus on the middle game, not the first opening moves, so that you would know how to crush your opponents when you have developed your army. And if you're playing with black, know how to neutralize the white's initiative. Our golden game started with the move d4, black played e6, that usually just transposes to the line where black plays d5 on the very first move, have bishop f4, all the very natural London system moves. White is trying to get their little setup in with the triangle or the pyramid, bishop on d3 and knight to f3. Have bishop to d6. And here, those who are new to the London system have to know this typical reaction by white when black plays bishop to d6. You're not obliged to play bishop g3, but this is the most popular way to play. White is saying that if black does take the bishop on g3, at the very least, white gets some activity with the rook along the h file. And most of the time, black do not take at this moment. So black plays the move c5. And the second very typical reaction that is very important to know for the white pieces is that when black is playing the move c5, they're trying to exert some pressure on d4. That is true. But also a lot of the times black wants to play the move queen to b6 and apply some pressure on b2. And for this reason, c3 serves as a multipurpose move. We're defending d4 twice right now with the pawns, but also against queen b6, because this pawn has moved, we can now defend this b2 pawn with the queen moves like c2 or the move queen to b3. We rarely ever want in the London system to play the move pawn to b3 as a response to queen b6 because we're simply weakening the queen side this way. Whenever you're pushing pawns forward, the squares and the pawns behind are getting weaker. And because we're intending to attack on the king side, we prefer to have no weaknesses on the queen side. In our game, black castled. We play knight f3, knight to c6. This is very, very natural for every London system player, bishop to d3, and we have the first position where black has quite a few branches, quite a few moves that they could play, for example, b6, rook to e8, and queen to e7, and for white, it's important to know that after queen e7 or rook e8, black is intending to play e5. So if you are not careful and just follow the general chess principles, castle whenever you can, then black would very easily equalize with the break e5. Just take a look at their space advantage and the center. They'll have no trouble having super duper active minor pieces with such support from their pawns. For example, you could have lots of trades on e5. And after all of that, black is just finding themselves in comfortable and equal position without problems. So what is the answer to rook e8 or queen e7? Well, one of the moves that white could play is knight to e5. We're now blocking the pawn from moving, and this way we're stopping their idea. This is what happened in our game. Black tries to apply more pressure on e5, and white supports that with the move pawn to f4. In this position, black could play again quite a few ways but we're just going to follow what's natural to a lot of amateurs and also what happened in our game it's the move c4 this way black is releasing the pressure and tension in the middle and help to create counterplay on the queen side with the moves like b5 and b4 you can see that black is gaining a lot of space on that side however then white without that any tension in the center can easily conduct a kingside attack. So I usually prefer leaving this opening of the center idea for black as a response to the white's kingside attack. So that white, one white rolls on that side of the board with the crushing attack, black can get some counterplay in the middle. However, in our game c4 has happened, white just drops back and still aims at h7. Black plays b5, white played the move a3 to stop b4 temporarily, and black reintroduces that idea by giving it support with the pawn move to a5. White hustles, currently white is ready to meet b4 with a takes b4 and black cannot take back because there is a pin along the a file. So black plays the move rook to b8 which supports the pawn move to b4, and white beautifully strategically maneuvers the pieces to the king side until he will have enough activity on this 
part of the board to get a tactic. So in order for you to get better at this stage of the game, you have to learn how to improve and maneuver your pieces. The tactics won't be helping you right now. However, once we have enough activity on the king side, then it's time to calculate and find the decisive blow. So first white plays bishop to h4. After we play the move f4, the bishop is really not doing anything on the square g3. Here it's not only active, but we could always take the main defender of the black's king side, the knight on f6. Black played the move bishop to e7, and white maneuvers more pieces to the king side. The idea is to go to h3 and indirectly look at the square h7. At any moment, we can remove the knight off f6, and then we could, with crushing attack, threaten to take on h7. In our game, black played g6, white now played queen to h3, black tries to defend the weak and dark squares with the king, and white moves even more pieces to the king side with knight to f3. At this moment, black panics, plays h6 in order to control g5, and every time we force our opponent to push the pawns, like g6 or h6, new squares and pawns have been weakened. So at this moment, in order for you to find the winning move, already peace maneuvering and strategy won't help you. In order for you to win here, you have to be tactically sharp, be able to calculate, and you could pause the video if you want and try to find a killing combination for white. It's an intuitive sacrifice, means that, means that you cannot win the piece back right away. And so the move was knight to f7. White already has so many attacking pieces that we could allow ourselves to sacrifice a piece to open up the black's king, and we still have lots of pieces to follow the attack with. We had king takes f7, knight to e5. We had knight takes e5, f takes e5, and we have a pinned knight on f6 with lots of problems for black. Rook to g8, and then even bishop takes f6 is allowed, and then king to e8, g6, and after rook takes g6, we have queen h5, and the rook is dropping on the square g6, white is winning the game. So we have two stages of the game. One stage starts with maneuvering the pieces to the king side, so its ability to have a lot of pieces that would surround the black's king. That would be called strategy. And at the end, as a fruit or result out of all of these strategic moves, we get a tactic like a cherry on the top of a pie. And in order for us to get good at this, we have to be good in tactics. Now, before we end today's lecture, I would also like to show you how I usually like to defend this kind of attack. So let's go back to this moment where black played rook to e8. And with black, I like to move pawn to b6 over here. Let's say white is trying to do the same thing with knight to e5. We're going to play bishop to b7, f4, very, very similar. And I will share one idea with you. Black in this position can play the move knight to e7. And the idea is to open up the black slide square bishop so that we could finally play the move knight to e4. All of this attack is very, very strong for white when this bishop is not closed. So if we could play knight to e4 or knight to f5 and block this bishop from attacking h7, usually that attack is not successful. So for example, if they continue with bishop to h4, similarly like in the game, we could play knight to e4. And believe it or not, white's attack is stopped and black even is better in this position. So a better move for white would be to play queen f3 and try to get this under control again. But then what black would play is the move knight to f5. And it's much, much more difficult for white to attack now because, yeah, you don't have bishop h4 even, but most importantly, this bishop ain't attacking h7. I wish you many, many wins with both white and black pieces. If you enjoyed the lesson, you can hire me as your personal online chess coach. My contacts are on the right. Subscribe to my chess channel to never miss a video. It's absolutely free. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.